Um, so we're going to really focus real quickly on some of the final things that happened with the, the assessments this year. Um, and then there's two remaining items that are in the works right now uh, that you may or may not want to know about. But the most of our time is I want thinking about how we can improve specifically the, the pre-ACT secure, but any of the spring assessments that are going on at the same time. Um, this is the first time that the pre-ACT secure was ever given anywhere. This is the first time that was ever done online by ACT. So there was a lot of learning going on. And so I need to have your feedback so that we can make sure that in the end, next year, um, at this time, we'll be going, man, did that go well. So that's that's what the hope is. That's what uh, we're going to be working on today. So let me share my screen with you, um, and we will get started. All right, so today, uh, just kind of conclude uh, with some of the things that we've been talking about for the last couple months. Uh, congratulations, we you've just about survived it. Um, and then we're going to uh, talk about the two smaller things that are going on right now or shortly. And then finally, that action, action after, after action review. Our resources are always there. We're trying to keep them up to date. So if you have ideas that of things that need to be there uh, over the summer, we typically do some kind of a rebuild on our web pages. And if you don't want to send us an email, if you're afraid of emailing us, you can always tell us in person. Uh, office hours continue. Um, I do want to just throw out there an update because again, um, this is something that you should probably know that most of you are not directly involved with, but um, it does affect students in your school. And I just want you to be aware. So AP or advanced placement testing is on track for this spring. Uh, it's coming up quickly, beginning May 1st. Uh, it goes through uh, May 12th, and then makeup is the 17th, 18th, and 19th. So it's pretty much three full weeks of uh, uh, assessment for us. It essentially is our world for that amount of time. Uh, we've got about 3,800 exams scheduled for this year. Uh, one of the good things is that we have over 150 students who are testing this year who have accommodations. So making sure that this is something that is available to um, all students. It also comes with a need, increased need for proctors. So I'm just gonna put this out there because I've been doing that for the last several weeks. We have an updated list. If any of you wants to take a break from your building and come out to the Line Energy Center for a good, good time, four hours. Um, we really would appreciate that. And uh, so the list of proctor needs is there. Um, and we'll be moving those around and, and getting those filled up until the day of testing usually. So, uh, but we appreciate your support. So if you have um, some questions or just curiosity, please let us know. All right, so end of testing, yay. All right, the window for forward DLM and dynamic, excuse me, the pre-ACT secure closes on April 28th. So that means we need to have all the opt-outs, uh, any reasons not tested, all documented and shared with us. And we will be working on getting those included in the platforms. Um, thank you to those of you who've already been sending us stuff. We really appreciate it. If you know ahead of time, um, that's so much the better. So, for instance, uh, Creed, I know you're. You said you were doing uh, uh, makeups, we're chasing kids down. I appreciate that. If you get to that point next week where you say, "Okay, we're done," send me the a list of the students who have not completed and the potentially the reasons why if you, you know for instance you just they didn't show up um that would be absent for the entire the test window and so we'll take care of getting that um into the platform all right however act is a little messier 
because it is there is no way of really mass uploading that until the question was asked and we pushed it and DPI said, um, okay, you guys have an awful lot of not tested students. And I said, yes. So um, how can we do this? Because it's crazy to do 276 by hand individually. So there is now a method to do this um, created by ACT to mass upload their uh, the not tested reasons. So it would involve downloading a template, putting the information in, then uploading that template um, to ACT. So it's a lot easier to work in a spreadsheet than to go into Pearson Access Next and to actually then pull down each individual student. So if you need help going through that, let me know. Um, if I'm going to help you with the uh, forward and et cetera, um, I will have to balance everything as we get ready for AP, but please let, let me know if, if you need help. I'm going to push on DPI once again to say, well, you did that for ACT. Can we do the same thing for the pre-ACT secure? So that again, we don't have to go in and individually put all that information in. So we'll see what they say. All right. All of this assessment creates data. And so I want to just give you a quick update, an overview of when the data comes back, what we do, because this is essentially our summer work, and go from there. So if somebody says, well, when are we getting ACT data back? Um, let's go through it. So the forward exam, um, which closes again on the 28th of April, comes back into IC approximately the middle of June. We hope to get that in there by June 23rd. So after school is out, of course. We get printed copies of all the results. They come to us in mid-July. Um, it is a roughly a 17,000 piece mailing that we do, and we cannot fold these um, printed reports automatically. So they're all folded by hand. Um, so it takes us a little while to get those out. So those are mailed to families typically by mid-August. So it's a job that is um, pretty large. Pre-ACT pre -ACT Secure is going to be back much sooner. Uh, the data should be available on the 27th of May um, in success.act.org. On that date, I'm going to be downloading the data and sending it off to the team that does the uploading into IC. So it should be an IC by the 1st of June or thereabouts. It usually takes a week. It might take less. Just so you know that that's available. Pre-ACT Secure will have reports that we will have to print. So we're going to print those. You do not have to do that. And then we will be um, assembling that and mailing it to families probably by the mid to late part of June, but definitely in June. So if families are wondering how they did on the pre-ACT, that will be available then. You will have access to all things, including the student reports through success.act.org. So you'll be able to look at that if you're going to do anything with um, school or team level uh, data, you can certainly do that. The ACT itself is a little bit different in that ACT gets students directly uh, their data through my ACT. It comes back to students um, between three and eight weeks after testing. And so that means uh, the earliest any students would have gotten it back would have been shortly after spring break. And we're probably talking about the end of May-ish when uh, the first of second of June, when the last group of students should have that available. So you're gonna get anxious students saying, hey, so-and-so got their data back, their, their ACT scores, uh, where's mine? Um, they have to check on my ACT, I do not get that. The results that we get as a district come as a file, a data file, uh, approximately June 16th, and we will be putting that again into IC um, shortly thereafter. So we'll have that data available 
to by certainly by the end of June. We do not mail anything home. If there is a case where a family needs an additional copy or uh, you need a copy of a student results um, and you can't access it in, in success.act.org, let me know and we'll work together to make sure that that happens. I know especially guidance counselors are anxious about having that information available. Access. Remember way back when, when we gave that assessment? That was December and January. The results are coming back shortly. So data is coming back on the 28th of April. We're going to get that in IC and um, actually the results back to schools so that they can be reviewed. If there are glaring errors, we need to know about it. Um, but it should be um, into IC by mid-June. Um, results, again, if, you are, if you're kind of keeping track of things that we mail, uh, the access uh, scores will be mailed home. Um, that will also be a June project for us. So we've got uh, pre-ACT with about, I want to say 4,500 to 5,000 pieces. Uh, access will be about 7,000 pieces. So we'll be putting those together and getting those out. We work to get those out as quickly as possible, just so you're aware. So we've got, I think we've got pretty much everything taken care of except for dynamic learning maps. Whole different thing. Data comes back to the district in late June and reports are shared with families as soon as possible after that. We have multiple ways of sharing with them. We're talking about a small group of students throughout the district and we share data in various ways with them. We'll also be sharing with case managers so that they get that information back as quickly as possible. Okay, we're almost ready to go. Um, just things coming up, climate survey, students and staff should have already received that via uh, email. Um, it's coming via email. Please encourage that everyone takes the time to actually complete it. Um, if you need any support with anything, uh, the research and innovation team are the lead on this. If you have questions, let me know or Sarah know, and we can forward your questions on to the folks who know about that. Again, the expectation is that every student has a chance to have their voice heard. So if um, uh, we'll be monitoring um, with the research team, um, the participation rate, and if we're getting halfway through and it looks like there's not many people um, participation, part participating, we'll make sure we let you know, and hopefully we can encourage uh, that participation because it's important and it does carry weight throughout the district. The final assessment that I want to just touch base with is that uh, Achieve 3000 spring window is May 1st through the 25th. Um, just so you know, that is also amazingly much an overlap with uh, advanced placement testing. So we will be supporting as much as possible, as quickly as possible. This is for our grade nine English students. And there was a rostering process that has been sent out um, last week. So if they need to make sure that classes are rostered there, um, please let me know. All right. Now, I do appreciate all the time and effort that went into uh, getting ready for the pre-ACT Secure and the fact that we were uh, all at different places and doing different things because ultimately that will allow us to be able to say, hey, this worked really well or this did not work at, at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some time um, to see what we can share ideas um, and I want to kind of really take a look at the four components of communications and uh, with families and setting things up, the pre-test, during the test, and the post-test. So there is a, a Google Doc that I would appreciate. I mean, if you don't, if we don't get time or if you've got ideas, I know Jocelyn, you had you laid them out very nicely in email. It might just be a copy and paste um, into that document. Um, so that again, I don't want you to waste time redoing things that you already did. But if we've been thinking about this and we just have some comments that we'd um, like to share, that would be that would be wonderful. Uh, 
I do want to uh, just tell you a little bit about next year uh, in general. So I'm going to stop sharing at this moment and we'll come back to this. Uh, I, I've been trying to lay the groundwork and I think I've spoken with everybody at this point, but it would be in the best interest of our students if we did the ACT itself online next year, um, as we know that the writing portion itself has been one that students are now more and more struggling with as they are expected to write, physically write by hand, less and less. So the ACT online, it would be almost identical in procedure to the pre-ACT secure. So it would be, again, setting up um, uh, sessions. It would probably, it would have the um, seal codes. It would have all those things. So as we brainstorm what would work better for the pre-ACT, um, we're also saying this might be some things to think about for the ACT. So you would not have um, stacks and stacks of paper next year. Um, keep in mind that one of the things I, I did get a phone call from DPI, from Nikki Brackenier saying, hey, I just wanted to touch base and see how you guys were doing, how things went. And she said, I'm seeing that you have about an 80% participation rate from the ACT as a district. I said, yes. She said, uh, are, you, are you planning on making up any tests? And I said, no, I don't think so. Uh, so, one of the things that we need to be looking at and thinking about next year, because this actually does make a difference, the online ACT, we still would have a juniors only day ACT, but there is a window. It's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, followed by a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the next week. And that is session one. So, even though the big day would be, for instance, a Tuesday, uh, there are ways that would be easier to catch students during the rest of that first window or during the second window or during the third. And it would be easier than having piles of paper around and keeping track of those. So again, making that, those, those, that ACT available to students to make up and I realize that we're getting, you know, students who say, forget it, I'm not touching that. But at least in a situation where we can say it's a whole lot easier for us to do than it was when we ordered boxes and boxes of paper exams. So um, I have probably talked way more than I wanted to. So now it's my turn to listen and um I am going to go to the uh, the Google document that I set up. And so I'm just going to share that with everyone. So if you could click in, if not, but at some point. So I guess I uh, just want to say, where would you like to begin? What, what worked for you? What were pain points, what were in it, that we don't have to go in any or any kind of order, um, things that stood out, things you would like to see done better, um, things that you thought went well. So I'm going to open it up. I can start. Um, Thank you, Matt. The thing that was trickiest was the technical issues at the very start for us. Um, we had never seen it before. We didn't know. Um, today we did makeups and I knew then that, uh, what was tripping up a lot of our 10th graders was the fact that when they were logging in to, um, test nav, it was taking them directly to, um, the, uh, Aspire test because they had previously taken the Aspire test. Didn't know that was going to happen on April 5th, um, or 7th, whichever date it was, I think it was the 5th. And so we ended up having so many people calling in on radio or sending me texts saying, hey, these kids are crashing that they can't log in, they can't log in, they can't log in. 
we ended up sending like 18 kids to the late room. Some teachers figured it out, said, oh, that's the secure. What do we do? How do we do this? Tim, I think you might have even done something with it in your uh, video that they should go up to their little person and go through. But you don't realize how important that one section of 10 seconds is of your video until you've been through it. So um, one, I know that that's something I'm going to emphasize. The language, uh, kids changing language on their Chromebook tripped up three or four kids. Um, there were some other things. One kid we just lost. I don't know what the heck happened to him. It was just the strangest thing. But um, the other thing I'm going to do is use a second person to be a troubleshooter online. So it'll be me and that second person in a room, basically um, troubleshooting together. Uh, and so if a call comes in on the radio, one of us is going to manage it and then get it back out um, and, and things like that. One thing I discovered that might be useful, and I don't know if everybody else did, but when you are done and you want to make your makeup sessions, being able to sort the um, uh, the lists, um, going to basically combine view of all your sessions and then filtering on the column for um, student test status. You can, it gives you all the kids who are ready, meaning they haven't started it all together. And then you can click on them and go to move. You can, you, you can then choose the function move and move them into makeup session that you created. So I didn't have to do it one at a time. I did like all the ninth graders, 901 through 918 all at once and move them to my standard time testing. And then, um, so I don't know if that was something other people discovered too, but it was something that was really useful in creating makeup sessions. Um, we did day one of makeups today, got 17 kids out of the 160 who hadn't done it. Gee, what a wonderful rate. And we're gonna do a no admit list and have teachers like tell kids they have to come down and see me tomorrow. We'll see what kind of a mess that brings. Yeah. yeah, you won't remember it next year, right? Yeah, exactly. I, so I probably won't remember it next year. It was super important. <laughs> I and I figured it out. Yeah, in fact, um, Ben and I were looking at something else today, and we had just done that last week and couldn't figure out how do we get there. And so, yeah, it's it's going to be that platform is not uh, one that's easy to navigate and to find all the pieces, nor is the guide document, the guidance document, a really gem. So, And I would love it if we can convince ACT or pre-ACT, because apparently they're not companies that communicate with each other. Same um, company. Yes, but if you, somebody is a proctor, a room supervisor for ACT, they don't show up on the pre-ACT list. You can't, can't assume that right. they're already there. But I would love to have grade level on this form. And uh, it's the only way that uh, the only kids that are identified as having disabilities are the kids who have is a TTS text to speech. That's the only thing that shows up as, oh, that's an accommodations kid. I wish it showed up with a timing code. There was a place where you could say, yes, I placed all 150% time kids in the same space. I got lucky. Well, but, you know, easily right. a lot of errors could happen that way. I'm done. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Anyone else with the uh, comments for the day of test improvements, things that you agree with, things that you workarounds that you had? Okay, so one of the things that we tried to do this year is we tried as a central office department, we're trying to ramp up the communications to say, hey, taking these tests is important. Now, it was really hard to do with pre-ACT because we've never seen it, we've never done it. It'll be easier next year. Um, what would help us get the message across to students and to families about the importance of testing. 
making the connection between pre-ACT and ACT, um, what the data is used for, I don't know. I don't have any great suggestions for that, but I do know that, I mean, linking it to the ACT is great. However, most of our kids don't care about the ACT anymore either. So um, I think if colleges were to require it again, maybe it would be a little bit more, but for kids that are just going into the job like market or mm -hmm. their colleges aren't requiring ACT scores anymore because of COVID, we're having a really hard time with all testing, I would say. I have no good okay. solution for you. <laughs> no, I just wanted to add that. I mean, I do think it's great. I mean, for there are a huge market of kids that do want to take the ACT and want to go to colleges and want that score and whatever. And then the pre-ACT they think is important because they feel like it's a step to get ready. I think that's a good link to make. But it's, it's not going to catch the 20% of kids that don't take the test. I don't think. Right. Just my opinion. No, I, I, you're probably right. And it's the, that 20% that we're trying to actually get to. So, you know, why, why would I take it if that's not my intention to go on to any post-secondary education? I'm going to go into the workforce, um, et cetera. What, so, okay. The one, the also, one thing, oh, okay, go, go ahead. ahead, finish. Go ahead and finish now. I was just going to say, we did ha also have not too many, but a handful of kids that had already taken the ACT. Like they think the ACT is really important. And so they took the ACT already in the fall or, you know, whatever. And so their parents said, well, I'm not making them take it again. And then we don't get them counted, right? They have to take it on the day for us. So, I mean, those kids weren't counted, even though they did take it. Now that's not 20%, obviously, but there was a handful that did have that reason as well. So I've been working on that one with Ben and West for a couple of years because what happens is um, student will come in and say, hey, I scored a 36 on the ACT. Why would I come back and take it again when I probably won't score a 36 because I didn't study quite as much as I did over the summer? Well, you they're opting out. Um, whether they physically just don't show up or they actually hand in a note and say, I opt out. And what they've done is they've taken some of the highest performers off your roster and you are, you know, it's like if, if a student wasn't going to score a proficient or, you know, basic kind of thing, um, they don't score, score points for your school. Whereas someone who's, you know, the top scores more. Um, I pushed that on, uh, I've been pushing that on with ACT for the last couple of years. I did again this year. And essentially uh, we can't do that per state statute. It has to be a specific administration given to all students. Um, and it's like, look, it's the same test, a score here and a, and a score here. You can't tell that one was given by this high school on March 7th and the other one was given by the same high school on a Saturday in September. But they uh, they said, essentially, talk to the legislature. So maybe I'll do that because that it makes a difference. So, okay, thanks. Ben. Yeah, I was just gonna say one of the selling points that I had for parents, and I think it worked to some degree because we didn't have nearly the level of opting out that we did this year that we did in last year. And I, I'm hoping you guys are in that same position, but what I, what I tried to sell the parents was that we want our kids to experience rigor, to experience challenges. And if they don't get the opportunity to experience the challenge of a test like this, they won't know what they're facing later on in life. And it doesn't matter if they never take a college class that has um, a long drawn out test or they never have to take a GREs or they never have to do anything like that test. But there will be, um, you know, even at work, if they go into the trades field, they have to pass exams to, to make it in the trades. They also, um, they're expected to have a strong work ethic if they are going into trades or, in, in a, you know, there's a lot of reasons to say we should challenge our kids. And there's a lot of reasons for parents to say, I'm not going to tell you, yes, I'm going to let you just say, no, I don't want to take it, so I'm opting out. 
Um, yeah. So I got a few reversals of opt-outs by sending kind of a stock paragraph that said it's healthy to challenge our students unless they are a kid who has severe anxiety or mental health issues where we need to back off on challenges like this. Um, so I was able to get a few Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Things that uh, concern about communicating, suggestions, things that may have worked. How can we support getting you ready for the test? Things that we can do. All the pre-test stuff. We got Thank you guys for your for your patience as um, I learned a lot of things along the way, because I know sometimes I was communicating with you all one thing and then the next day I'd be like, oh, I was wrong. So I appreciate your patience on that. Um, it was definitely a learning experience. I was definitely making the assumption that it was similar, more similar to ACT Aspire than it was. So um, I do want to thank you all for your patience on that. Yes, and we were all learning and sometimes we were a step ahead and sometimes we're a step behind all of you. So thank you. Okay. Um, we are still in that post-test time frame. Um, and we talked about the the mass uploads for ACT for not tested reasons. I'm hopefully going to get that kind of thing going um, for the pre-ACT secure. But any other thoughts of uh, any other support, any things that uh, were how uh, you know, did you have did you have issues with enough computers? I should I mean this this falls in multiple places. Did you have enough Chromebooks for kids? Did they were charges, you know, on their computers? Were they full? Did you I mean, did you run into a lot of issues like that during the testing? I think the kids who didn't show up are the ones that don't bring their Chromebooks. So <laughs> I think we were we were fine. We we we, you sat, we had some loaners go out, but um, it wasn't a huge number. Uh, kids came with charged Chromebooks in general. I think we lent out about thirty for okay. uh, pre ACT. Okay. So what I'm planning on doing is uh, taking this list and sending it to you. I'll keep it as a, a Google Doc. Um, and we're going to add some, I'll go back through the email thread and add things into this that may or may not have shown up. Um, but if you, as we close out the year and as you look back to the pre-ACT secure test, if there are things that can be done for all of us uh, to improve um, let me know. The last thing um, I do want to share is that a suggestion that came from a staff member at Memorial was that in the afternoon, we've got students who are, you know, in most buildings, students in 10th grade did the forward test. Why would we not consider having our ninth graders do the civics test, which would free up uh, social studies class time um, during the regular school year. So that's a thought. That's something that we may throw out there and, and say, hey, we can we can buy back time for staff. They can still prepare their classrooms just like they would um, for the civics test, but it would actually be on that afternoon. Just a thought. So... All right, friends, I'm going to uh, once again say thank you for all your work. You have been amazing as as always. Um, and I want to make sure that um, we stay in contact as we go throughout the rest of this, this spring. If you need anything, let us know. Um, if we need something, we'll ask politely. So um, please... Um, 
keep us in mind and uh, let us know if anything comes up. So...